Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmulkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's episode, we are going to answer the question, why and how does the brain control the immune system? And this is a really interesting topic because neuroimmunology is a brand new upcoming field. It's only about 10 years old because they've kind of realized that the immune system and the brain or the immune system and the neurological system have these dual or bi-directional interactions. And there's this brand new paper out from uh, August of 2020 that is looking more at a review of how the brain, why the brain and what structures in the brain are used to control immunity. Um, and I just think it's a really cool paper. It's really interesting. Um, to hear about how the brain can control the immune system. The reason why this is important is because autoimmunity is when the immune system is a little bit out of whack or uh, can be overactive. Sometimes in, in bacterial infections, viral infections that cause uh, a cytokine storm or excess inflammation or um, even chronic infections that cause excess inflammation, again, the immune system is a little bit overactive. And so, um, the brain being able to control that is really beneficial. And so sometimes working on your brain health can actually help your immunity. It can actually help you prevent from getting infections or decrease autoimmunity um, and many other things. So I want to talk about this paper. I think, it's, uh, I think it's a really good one. I'm sorry if there are a lot of big words and it may be difficult to understand, but um, I want to just kind of go, um, go through kind of step by step and there's a lot of great great figures in here. So um, it's called Neuronal Regulation of Immunity, Why, How, and Where. And so it's from Nature Reviews. So Nature Reviews is a very good, um, very good journal. And again, like I said, it's from 2020, August. And so right in the, right in the abstract, we have neuroimmunology is one of the fastest growing fields in life sciences. Uh, it fills the gap between two principal systems of the organism, the nervous system and the immune system. Uh, although both systems affect each other through bidirectional interactions, um, here, they're just going to focus on how the nervous system affects immunity. Um, and so, of course, they're asking, why does it affect immunity? How is it going to affect, how does that brain communication affect the immune system? Um, and then where in the brain? And so that's kind of what we're going to go over here. So let's just kind of walk through it. Um, we're just going to go through each, each picture. Um, and I may go back to a couple other parts that I thought were really interesting. So the figure one is why is it beneficial to allow the nervous system to control uh, the immunity? And so there's basically three things that they propose. So you have integration and synchronization, you have prediction, and you have speed. Okay, so first of all, integration and synchronization. So basically the brain takes in all of these inputs, it takes in external inputs from our temperature from you know the day night cycle so like the circadian rhythm um, it takes in internal inputs like cytokines which are uh, chemicals of the immune system that are going to basically tell the brain what's going on with the immune system it takes in all these inputs externally internally also externally are these uh, you know our sight our sound um, and it's able to integrate them and create a good physiological response uh, which we'll talk about those, those responses later. But for instance, one thing is synchronizing immunity with circadian rhythm. So I'm not sure where in this paragraph here, uh, where in this paper it exactly is, but I have too many highlights. But it talks about how uh, vaccines, when you get a vaccine, it is generally better um, going to stimulate your immune system to create the antibody response you want when the vaccines are given in the morning. So there are clinical trials that show that vaccines administered in the morning versus in the afternoon uh, do better, are more effective. So that's just one really interesting thing about this circadian rhythm, this integration synchronization that occurs with the brain um, to create a better immune system. Uh, prediction. And so just like, so our immune system has a memory. Once we see something, um, uh, bacteria or virus, then we are better likely to respond to that later. Um, but the immune system takes time to develop. It's not like an automatic boom response um, versus 
the brain can create some, some prediction based on past experiences. So for instance, when we smell some cooking, when we smell some, some great food in the kitchen, we start initiating like salivary responses for digestion, some other digestive enzymes in our gut, our gut starts to move, okay? Same things happens with the immune system in that if we have some sort of damage in our gut because of a viral infection, that nociception is a quick electrical response to the brain to create um, quick changes in immunity to go fight it. The, um, the other thing, like another past experience, may be if we smell something foul, right? Smell like uh, we, we open up, there's some leftovers in the fridge, we open it up and we smell something foul. Um, it could be moldy. And so our brain is in, in, in smelling that and initiating maybe an immune response, getting ready to fight whatever mold that is going to be or um, to enhance our immune system if we end up eating it, okay? And then speed. So what I just said before, it's an electrical connection. So there is a very high speed or high rate of transmission for, for the brain. And this is important based on, uh, based on immunity, sometimes the lowest lower of the immune system. So an acute stress response can activate the stress system, the sympathetic nervous system, to get quick immune cell mobilization. At the same time, we can have rapid termination of inflammation. So as I was talking about before with autoimmunity, after, after we get an infection, we have this big response. We need to dampen it to prevent uh, damage to other cells, or this overactive response leads to autoimmunity, where our immune system attacks our cell. And so, this rapid termination is through the vagus nerve, the parasympathetic system, where the vagus nerve can then suppress the immune response through this inflammatory reflex. So that's kind of why it's important for the brain to have control over the immune system. Um, next, we'll look a little bit at how that regulatory system works. And so there's a few, few photos here. So um, one way is through the endocrine path endocrine pathway or neuroendocrine pathway is through hormones. So therefore, hormones are signaling molecules that travel through the blood. This is gonna go a little bit slower than maybe a quick electrical impulse. But you have parts in the brain called the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. And we'll see those a little more in detail later. But they're releasing these different neuropeptides or these different hormones that are activating different glands in our body, whether that be the thyroid gland, or the adrenal gland, um, our ovaries, or testes, um, so our sex hormones. And this is going to help to improve immunity as well. Um, for instance, testosterone generally increases, or sorry, decreases the immune response, okay? Um, while estrogen can increase or enhance the immune response. This is sometimes why we think that estrogen or in women that who of course have more estrogen are going to have more autoimmunity because they have this enhanced immune, immune response to everything. Um, next, we have the sympathetic nervous system. So we have a systemic sympathetic nervous system, which is basically the brain connects through the spinal cord um, into the sympathetic chain that goes right to the adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla releases epinephrine. Epinephrine is really important in activating our stress response. Um, and this, again, there is some controversy in what that does. Generally, epinephrine is going to increase the immune system, increase the immune response, versus like cortisol, which comes from the outside of the adrenal um, gland, the adrenal cortex, that may suppress inflammation, suppress immune a little bit. And then we have a local sympathetic pathway, which can activate different areas of the body, specific locally. So you have an acute infection in your finger. We can activate local responses by shunting blood flow or preventing blood flow, blood flow maybe from that area so that we're not getting too much inflammation. Okay, now here are some examples, right, um, for each of them. So I guess I could have talked about them, but that's okay. Let's go right to the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, we have fast localized signals, again, for these specific target sites. Um, and the main one we talked about before was that vagus nerve activation, which is suppressing the inflammatory or inflammation or the inflammatory reflex in general. A sensory pathway is what I mentioned before with that, like if there's nociception 
for basically there's a little bit of pain, so damage to cells, uh, that can activate the brain to then come back down and initiate these local responses to immune cells, okay? So it has direct detection of potential threats, transfer information from the periphery to the brain, and it can also interact locally with the immune system. Um, and then lastly is the meningeal lymphatic pathway. So the lymphatic system is this secondary uh, flow or fluid system that it is attached to the brain, but it helps to basically um, survey different, different areas in the blood, in our interstitial fluid throughout our body. And then it has lymph nodes that are going to then be able to recognize something as foreign or self and determine if it needs an immune response. And so the meningeal lymphatic pathway is around the meninges of the brain, basically covering. And this allows us to get rid of waste and debris, um, get rid of like amyloid plaques that may build up when we are leading towards like Alzheimer's. Um, but at the same time, it's also able to tell the immune system like, hey, there is a virus in here and we can get that viral particle into a lymph node to, 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 let, it know what, to let it know what's happening so therefore we can have this immune response. Okay, and then the last diagram is a little more of the what. Uh, this is a great paper, guys. It's a, it's a really long one, but it has a lot of great information. Uh, so the what or the where are these happening? So as I mentioned before, brain regions involved in these descending pathways to activate the immune system or to regulate it. We have the hypothalamus in here, we have the pituitary gland, and we have the brainstem. All of these are part of autonomic functions. And the hypothalamus helps control these endocrine pathways, okay? Um, and maybe either through the pituitary gland or separately. And so um, it just has these, these relative immune effects in each one. Um, there are different nuclei in the hypothalamus that do different things. The brainstem also regulates autonomic functions. So that's where the vag vagus nucleus is. That's where the sympathetics are, are highly controlled in this brainstem. Um, next is we have brain regions involved in integration and synchronization, okay? So the hypothalamus, again, is involved in that, and the insula, the insular cortex. So these regions are basically taking in a lot of information from other brain regions and trying to integrate them to say, well, how do we need to create this immune response? And then it talks to these other areas, like the brainstem, like the pituitary gland, to initiate that. So the hypothalamus, is a central homeostatic site. Basically, it helps to create this balance and regulation within the brain and body. So it includes you know, sleep rhythm, circadian rhythm, metabolism. So therefore, we know, for instance, like if we get an infection, we might get a fever. We increase metabolism to try to increase our immunity to fight it off. That's based in the hypothalamus. The insular cortex is related to body awareness, interoception. So the idea of feeling what's inside our body, whether that's our gut, our heart, our lungs, anything there and being able to understand where it is, where the issue is, whether it may be just you know tight muscles, whether it may be constriction, it may not even be an infection, but when it is an infection, we need to be able to recognize it and activate the proper local response needed. And then last thing is the brain regions involved in prediction. So we know the somatosensory cortex, which is again, our body feeling, but that's more of like our skin, our touch, relays these important info to different areas. So for instance, bacterial antigens or bacterial products can activate these sensory uh, neurons in our body and therefore have this nociception or damage reaction in, the, in that per, or primary somatosensory cortex to create an immune response down the road. Uh, the hippocampus is important in memory, really important in memory, and that is related to the amygdala. The amygdala is important in memory and emotions, fear, anger, um, these emotional responses. And so these two are both, again, involved in immunity. We, when we are more stressed out, when we are um, angry or sad, we may have less effective immune responses. And then lastly, the ventral tegmental area is within the brainstem, the midbrain. This releases dopamine. And so it's a region that's activated during positive expectations. So when we have good dopamine, good amount of dopamine, we have positive uh, emotions, we can enhance our antibacterial and our anti-tumor um, or um, yeah, anti-tumor natural killer cell immunity. 
as well. So, um, sorry, that was kind of a long one. Uh, I think this paper is great. I'll come back to the top so we can see what it looks like. Neuronoregulation of immunity, why, how, and where. I think um, if you are interested in this, you should take a look at the paper. It can be pretty dense, but there are some good points as well um, for both you know, everybody, everybody out there that's interested in enhancing their brain, but also the, the general practitioner as well. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any comments, again, leave them below as well. Thank you for, uh, for listening in today, and I hope this was a good one. Uh, have a great day, and stay healthy. Thanks.